You just picked yourself up a brand new PlayStation Portal, you lucky dog. These things are virtually impossible to get. There's going to be a lot of disappointed children around the Christmas tree this year. And unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of disappointed kids around Xmas when they actually turn on the portal and get to start to gaming with it. The tips and tricks in this video are going to help you to get the best possible streaming experience with the portal and make you much less likely to return this son of a bee. These are going to be some easy to follow along with tips that I myself have been practicing since picking up the portal that have made my experience with it that much more enjoyable. Yes, there's still going to be some major shortcomings, cons, or limitations with this device. Made my voice go up high because there's so many of them. No Bluetooth, no web browser, which makes using public networks very difficult. But at its core, this is a pretty fun device if you just want to play some PlayStation games around the house. But you can't use the TV you bought because Betty and the Snot Nose Rejects are utilizing it to watch Paw Patrol. We're going to start with some free tips because you already spent $200 on this device. But if you've got an extra chunk of change in your pocket, maybe a roll of dimes, we're going to talk about the wide world of Wi-Fi 6E routers and modems, none of which are cheap. But that is honestly your best bet of getting a solid connection with the PlayStation Portal. This video will be broken into timestamps or chapters reflected in the description and timeline of the video, so feel free to jump around if there's a specific tip or trick that you're, you're looking for. But if you've got the patience, balls, and charisma, hang out with me for the entire video, and let's learn how to make this thing not suck quite as badly. Let's get it. I might have been a little bit rough and tumble during the intro on the PlayStation Portal, and I might have been even more aggressive towards it during my comprehensive review, because I do believe for $200, US Sony really phoned in this device. But there is a lot of very satisfied customers, because at its core, this does allow you to play your PlayStation 5 titles around the house. Because if you turned a blind eye to all the cons or shortcomings, this is a, this is a damn near perfect device. I mean, for God's sake, IGN gave it an 8 out of 10 and said it was... Uh, here, here's the quote. I gotta say... This thing rules. Um, we are going to get this device where it should be or where it can be. The absolute cap, pinnacle, peak of performance with the portal, which still leaves a little bit to be desired in my opinion, considering for about $100 you can get this Razer device or a Backbone or any of these generic devices popping up on screen here, which allow you to remote play not only your PlayStation titles, but xCloud for your Xbox games, Steam Link for your PC games. That's neither here nor there. We have a portal in hand. Let's make this thing kick ass. The very first one is to make sure that your PS5 console is up to date with the latest and greatest firmware patch you are not prompted to the portal yes that needs to be updated but your playstation 5 you can be on an older firmware and still run the portal so make sure you update that bad boy because with each update or patch connectivity with things like remote play are getting better the next one is to have your playstation 5 plugged up via ethernet and i understand this might be a major inconvenience or just not possible at all maybe your modems in one room of your house or apartment but then your ps5 consoles all the way in the other so wi-fi is just the way to go however you can get one of these plug and play repeater boxes from a company like TP-Link that work as a middle way point to repeat the signal from your router, which not only gives you better Wi-Fi connection, but they also usually have an Ethernet port at the bottom, which won't give you the same native speeds as going connected directly to your modem. But oftentimes with those devices, you can get better speeds than going Wi-Fi where you might be in a blind spot of your house if you're not using a repeater. Or even if you are using a repeater, use that little Ethernet port at the bottom to simulate you having an Ethernet wired connection to your PS5 for that tethered connection. By the way, all the goodies and internet devices that I mentioned in this video, modems, routers, repeaters, are going to be linked in the description below. So you don't really have to go digging. I'm the one that has the shovel in hand, and you just go down there and click on what you want. Those are affiliate links. You don't pay an extra dime at purchase, but they keep the lights on here, which I appreciate. The next little tip or trick I heard down there in the comment section of my review, tried it, sure enough, does work. You're going to come to the settings of your PS5 in order to get there. Top right, you have the cog icon. Scroll your ass down to screen and video, and then guess what we're about to do? Cap our resolution to 1080p. Sounds ridiculous and silly, kind of is, but it'll get you better performance on the portal. Your console most likely has automatic selected. I have manually selected 4K here to leave the guesswork out of it. However, we are going to select 1080p. Oh, my capture card lost signal. There it goes. It has returned. Now, this really does suck meat considering each time you go to play your PS5 on your TV or monitor, you have to increase it back to 1440p or 4K. But what is happening here is your PlayStation is always going to limit or cap the resolution to 1080p, whether you're in menus, games, 
streaming things like Netflix or YouTube. Keep in mind, that's the only way you're going to view that kind of content on the portal because it doesn't have a web browser as of current, which is crazy because there's a little Snapdragon processor on here. So this could have web browser capability, but Sony's deciding to shaft us with that. But now since your games aren't streaming in 4K, they're streaming in, well, one fourth of the resolution at 1080p. That weird pixelated bitrate issue, that haze, if you will, is all but gone, which is awesome. Yes, you're only seeing a 1080p image, but in a tiny screen, the pixel density is completely adequate. And this is a big improvement. So cap your resolution to 1080p and don't bang your knee. One thing I really don't like is you can't actually change this while your remote played to your console. You need to physically bring your happy ass over to the console and change these settings. You cannot, you, you don't have full control of your console from the remote play device, which I find boggling considering it is a first party Sony device. Also, I have heard from a few individuals that turning VRR variable refresh rate off can increase performance on the portal. I personally don't want to do that because VRR is a freaking godsend for a lot of modern titles, but if it'll make your portal run better, turn it off right here. The next pro tip, the onboard screen of the portal is capped to 60 hertz, meaning the image you're going to see is only going to be a maximum of 60 frames per second. So what you can do is take this to automatic and turn it to off. This is another setting you will need to tick back on when you're playing on your TV or monitor, but instead of 120 hertz, games will try and target nothing higher than 60, which means that image being streamed over to your portal isn't as taxing, isn't as resource intensive. The next one, and this is just simply silly considering this is a portable device. Well, not really. It's not really portable because if you try and take it to public networks like Starbucks or Burger King, they're going to give you a web page prompt to agree to their terms and service, but there's no web browser on the portal, so you can't even agree to those, meaning 90% of public networks are a no-go for you. Not to mention, the closer you are to your PS5, the better performance you're going to have, at least in my experience. So I'm hearing a lot of people say it doesn't matter about your Wi-Fi home network at all, and then I'm hearing people say it doesn't matter how close you are to your PS5. I'm here to tell you all y'all just, just shh for a second. In my experience, it all matters with the portal. The speed of the Wi-Fi network you're connected to, how your PS5 is connected to internet, how close are you to that PS5, is it raining outside, all these little factors, and yes, I just mentioned raining outside, but there are some random droppages you'll get, even with Wi-Fi 6E, just randomly, you're right next to your portal, in the middle of beaten ass and ghost of Shushima, you might be mid parry, right, and it knocks you right out of the aisle of Shushima, you're not even on the island anymore, you're sitting there scratching your tukis as you're staring at the blue portal ring on your screen, wondering how you've just come disconnected. I promise you this is a tips and tricks video for the portal, not just me ranting and raving about it. It's hard to not just sprinkle in little bashes there because this device has so many shortcomings. But if you're looking for a major gaming journalistic platform to solidify your purchase, uh, check out IGN. They gave it a very good review. I gotta say, this thing rules. Granted, the like to dislike bar on that video is is a tilt in the wrong direction. Station portal review by IGN. It's got, ooh. <laughs> Get a little ratioed if you catch my drift. Brutally honest review where I'm just slapping this thing sideways. Okay, yeah, not as much love as my usual joints, but 86.9 percentile over here. 70 disgruntled gamers who received this bad boy and are pissed that the internet's slamming it. But this bar is a tried and true example that the internet does still crave honesty from tech reviewers. Love to see that. Anyway, I got super sidetracked, but the point is stay close to your access point, which in this case is going to be your PlayStation 5. So the closer you are to your PS5, the better. It's sucks that it matters that much being that close to your access point, but the closer the better. So sit next to your PS5. Now, the biggest thing you can do for the performance of the PlayStation portal is to slap your wallet around a little bit because there's going to be a big old monthly fee from your ISP or internet service provider to get balls to the wall gigabit or better ethernet, at which time you're eligible to spend a one-time upfront cost, usually 160 to 300 plus dollars for a proper Wi-Fi 6E router. Keep in mind, this is most likely going to piggy bank off of the modem. For example, I have AT&T gigabit and they don't let you remove their gateway completely completely from the equation, but you can put it into a pass-through mode where it will just pass through the gigabit signal from the curb into your tri-band router. And what exactly 6E is, the easiest way to describe it is it breaks your internet into three streams. We all know about 2.4 and 5G because they've been around for fucking ever. 2.4G is generally wider coverage, but not as fast. 5G, closer range, but quite a bit quicker. Now, Wi-Fi 6E, while it can give you better peak speeds, the main perk or benefit is that with that third band, that third separate stream of internet connectivity, it gives you much better consistency when when you're streaming things. So the PlayStation Portal, for example, a, a remote play device would benefit greatly from a 6E router. But if you're in a household where everyone is streaming, which is pretty much the modern American household, not even America, I mean worldwide, and that's going to bog down your system. And with the Portal, bog is the enemy of performance. And Jesus Christ, get yourself a 6E router. They're hell of expensive. Plus you got that monthly slap around from your internet service provider. So it's an expensive game playing 6E here. Just to clarify, you don't need gigabit speed ethernet in order to buy a Wi-Fi 6E router. However, 
offer. If you're already paying $150 plus for a top of the line router, you're probably already paying for balls to the wall internet as well. And you have to take into account that monthly fee. It's been a long time since I've done a tour of my home internet, probably about two or three years when I showed my modem and router, where I ran all my coax cables and whatnot. So in the near future, I'll probably be doing an update video, but linked in the description below is the router that I personally use, which is the Triban Axe 5400, otherwise known as the Archer Axe 75, a gigabit wireless internet axe router for gaming with a VPN and one mesh, WIPA 3, literally just read all the words on the landing page. But full disclosure, I was on a Wi-Fi 6E network from my initial review, so all of my thoughts there where I'm like, yup, there's still input lag or delay, there's still this weird pixelation, this haze, yes, I've lost connectivity with both my PS5 multiple times, all of that is on Wi-Fi 6E, getting over a gigabit down and close to a gig up, usually about eight to 900 up. And again, there's gonna be a few individuals in the comment section saying things like, oh, your Wi-Fi network doesn't matter, you can be on 30 down. I implore you to go attempt to game on the portal on 30 down and report back to me with your findings. Also, side point, there were a few individuals mentioning that they had played the portal out and about out in town. First of all, very limited on what public networks you can use. And even when you are able to successfully attach to a public network, unless you're playing some kind of a retro indie platformer game, which again, it has to be installed on your PS5. So it's not like you're digging from your Steam library or anything. God forbid you're trying to go AAA playing Ghost of Shishima or Last of Us or Alan Wake 2. You're going to want to be 6E close to your access point in your house, at which point, what are we doing here? And the very last tips or tricks I want to leave you with is going to be to set expectations for this device and also look at the competitors. So one, setting expectations. I knew getting into this, this is a remote play device. Really, this only has the comfort of a dual sense slot down the middle with duct tape holding it together with a tablet in the center. And that's fine, but if that's the route you're trying to take, why not just get this device popping up on screen here, which is linked in the description below, or this device, which is also down there in the description below. But if you've set your expectations that you know that this is not going to be anywhere close to a native experience of playing your PS5 games at your PS5, and you still need to have your PS5 on and running, and you wouldn't rather just pocket that $200 and put it towards a better dedicated handheld like the ROG Ally or the Steam Deck OLED or the a and Neo Air or the Switch OLED or a jailbroken PS Vita, which is a tremendous system in 2023. Savagely underrated, it was way ahead of its time when it launched and is still slapping ass in the gaming department now. Hopefully the tips and tricks in this video helps you to get an enjoyable experience out of your portal. And if not, it is very easy to return this bad boy, whether you ordered it from PlayStation Direct, they have a no questions asked return policy, just like Best Buy, Walmart, or Amazon, because they're such a large vendor. There's a little drop down. You select, I wasn't satisfied with this product, which is unfortunately the experience of a lot of gamers picking up this bad boy. And a lot of people that have bought this device, that unit won't even be opened until Christmas because they bought it as an early Christmas gift. But when it is opened, little Jimmy or Sally is going to try connecting to their PS5 over their home Wi-Fi and be like, what the fuck is going on? I thought I'd be playing Astro's Playroom, but it looks like somebody dancing under a strobe light at a disco. Little do they know, all they've got to do is sit three feet away from a $300 Wi-Fi 6E router and feel the heat of their PS5 because you got to be that close to it. I'm just having fun over here, but in all seriousness, I'm going to be doing a video, what is the best handheld experience in 2023 slash four. The PlayStation Portal will be making a guest appearance, but lo and behold, it is probably not going to fare very well. It is probably going to get its ass beaten aggressively by a lot of the competition. Who's going to be unarmed? It's not like they're coming in there with bats and chains. Uh, the Portal, to make it fair, I'll even give it a little stiletto switchblade or something, still going to get fucked up. Sony has brought a knife to a gunfight as far as handhelds in 2023 are concerned. But hopefully the tips and tricks in this video helped you to get the best experience possible out of your PlayStation portal. Drop in the comment section below your opinion of this device thus far, and I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven, and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily, all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.